Last class, <clears throat> we, I, I feel like reading the last part of what I shared with you over again, it has to do with a new group with a new spirit. Anybody remember that? Raise your hands. A new group with a new spirit. And this is <clears throat> literally talking about the, the new uh, group being the first church in the, in the book of Acts. And, um, and we went through, <clears throat> and, and I'll, I'm going to go through this again, <clears throat> because I want you to see that they genuinely were not, number one, they were not just carrying on the traditions of the fathers. They were engaged with the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> and they were um, uh, uh, different. They were different. I mean, you know, and usually when we think different, well, you know, well, they got more money or, you know, nicer job or whatever. But these were different because of the insides, Christ living in them and the Holy Spirit guiding them, <clears throat> which Stephen, if you remember and have read his, his speech, um, flat out says, you know, you have, you know, basically grieved the Holy Spirit. You have not honored the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm going to do this, this again, and then we'll get into what I had for tonight. A new group with a new spirit. <clears throat> so this new group of which Stephen was now a part were different than those before them in specific ways, in very specific ways. Instead of them following the same pattern of persecuting what is of God, they willingly take unjust treatment, and they did. This is no, you know, this is no Randyism. This is no, you know, somebody after a while listening to me will go, oh, well, this is just Randy's thing about the lamb and about, you know, uh, except for, you know, I tend to change books every so often teaching, and it still seems to say the same thing. So, so there's that. Um, for example, in Acts 4, 15 through 21, we read, But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. And so this is a conference. This is a conferring among themselves those who have this other spirit that is not the one that the new church has. <clears throat> they want to get rid of everybody that's a problem. Right. I didn't mean that for you again. <laughs> because we're keeping you. Amen. You got that? <laughs> <laughs> they can't tell who I'm talking to on there. We love you. Okay, so... For example, uh, but, but when they had co commanded them to go aside out of the uh, uh, council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? It's not what shall we do for them. It's not what shall we do. It's what shall we do to these men? For, for that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But we cannot deny it. But we do have power, right? Um, <clears throat> but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no more uh, to no man in this name. And they, they called them and they commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. So what we're seeing at this early stage, before Stephen, before Stephen, 
<clears throat> we're seeing um, the beginnings of an uprising in a good way. A move of the spirit. An uprising. Let's rise up, people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's rise up in the Lord. And let's hear what he's saying. And let's, let's become a part of that which was of God and still is of God. And they're part of that great cloud of witnesses going, come on, come on. You know? <clears throat> so. Um, um, Where did I go? I must have hit my iPad and slipped it up a little bit here. Okay, so these verses give us a, a lighter version of what Stephen's speech will be about and concerning the new believer's response, which was to not be moved by negative repercussions, even if things were pushed in a more worse direction, which they were with Stephen. In fact, this was uh, probably one of the lightest, you know, what we just read, one of the lighter um, dealings by the, the fathers, if you will. <clears throat> so um, now let's consider Acts 5, verse 24 through 30. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest uh, heard these things, they doubted of them where, where into this would grow, meaning they are worried that this would spread. Um, Movements spread. You say, well, don't say the word movement. Uh, movement is not being stagnant, it's moving. <laughs> you know, uh, just sitting in a pew is not going to change the world. Just sitting in new, new comfy chairs. <laughs> Isn't that going to change the world? The Spirit of God falling on his people and revealing Christ. And, and if you will, and I, and I know this is not a correct way of saying it, but awakening Christ in them. Now, now it was the true fact that Christ came into them. But in our case, it would be like an awakening of Christ in us by the power of the Holy Spirit and um, being able to declare, you know, like Stephen did, right? Yeah. Yeah. With boldness. So, um, then came one and told them, saying, I mean, they're sitting here. Now, when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. There, there's, you've got the high priest and you've got the captain of the temple. He's the char sergeant at arms. He'll deal with you if you misbehave in the temple. This temple. <laughs> but that's not... He's talking about the, the main temple. And then the chief priests, so they're, they're standing around talking about these things and going, well, I don't know, this is a little worrisome. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put into prison are standing in the temple. <laughs> and the high, the high priest says, Where's the, the captain of the temple? Oh, you're right here. <laughs> right? They were having meetings trying to figure out how to slow this thing down or, or, or get rid of it while the new generation is out there having meetings, sharing life with everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> then went the captain, of course, it would say that first, right? because they're doing it in the temple. This is the captain of the temple. <clears throat> then went the captain with the officers. The officers. Yes, officer. <laughs> Anybody ever said that before? Uh, 
and uh, with the officers and brought them without violence because they're starting to change in spirit, right? No, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. Um, and, and so, uh, and when they brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest asked them saying, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? <clears throat> Last time I read this, I skipped a, a situation that happened to me. I think I'll tell it to you now. We, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave off the first part, Deb. But we, we were missionaries in Jamaica, and uh, we were again, we were not, we were not anywhere near civilization. And well, I might as well just throw it in. <clears throat> One night, me and Augie Zimmerman were working on uh, uh, rebuilding an engine. <clears throat> it was late and it was dark, and there wasn't a lot of light. You know what I mean. And um, uh, while we're working on it, um, all of a sudden, I just look up. We were, we were sitting on the ground trying to get something loose. I just look up, and I took off running through the bush instead of on the trail. And through the bush is jungle. It is the jungle. There are sharp things in there. there that, that just, the, just the leaves and stuff will cut you all up. We're shooting straight through there to where our where we live, which is not that far, but it's, it was far enough, and uh, running with all my might because I just felt something was wrong with Deb back at the house. So I come running, running, burst out through the jungle, you know, on the other side, ran up to the door, and, 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 and yeah, I tried to get in, and then you're, you were crying, and so you didn't know who I was, and then I had to say, it's, it's me, opened the door, and she fell on me, and was just broke down major crying, and I said, what's wrong, what's wrong? She said, some guy was at the door trying to break in. All right? And she said, she said, how did you know? This is the honest truth. This is a true story. I'm not embellishing this at all. I didn't know. I was moved by the Spirit of God to get over there as fast as I could, and I didn't know why. And someone had escaped. Well, what we found out was this guy had been in a mental institution, and um, and he had seen her, and uh, so. Um, so later, and this was probably, wasn't it probably a couple of weeks later? I, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at our, our church. Uh, I was the pastor of the church there. It was a small one. <clears throat> but we had, you know, Jamaicans that, that were regulars that came. And it was my habit uh, at the end of the service was to go to the, the back door, the door where everyone would be leaving from. Uh, and greeting everybody and talking with them as we're going and stuff like that. And uh, some of you remember that I used to do that when we were on Maple and Wells. You remember? I used to go to the door back there. And Anyway, <clears throat> so I was doing that, and this car pulls up, and this same guy gets out of the car. The church only has two walls now because, it, because it's uh, tropical. Anyway. Yeah, if you put up too much stuff, it's, it gets hot. Anyway, so he, he pulls up, and he's got another guy driving, and he gets out, and he walks up to me, and, and uh, people are still milling around talking, and I'm only catching whoever starts out the door. And he walks up to me, and he goes, get in the car. And I said, what? And he shows me he's got a gun. He said, get in the car. I said, I ain't going to get in that car. He said, you're going to get in the car. And I said, I'm going to stand right here, and I'm going to greet every one of these people that come here for the Lord. And, uh, and uh, he looks at me, and he goes, I think he says one more time, get in the car. And I said, no, you get in the car. So he turns around and he starts towards the door, which is only a few steps away. 
and he stops and he looks at his gun. He looks at it and he goes, I've got a gun. <laughs> but I've got a gun. And then gets in the car and leaves. And I think that was the last we heard of him. Yeah. I mean, he's going. But I think the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I think the Holy Spirit got hold of him. Anyway, there were some here where I was reading that in two, uh, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with it. You know, it, it's like, didn't we tell you? I, I've got a gun. <laughs> you know, you need to do this. Because they did have a gun. That, that gun was the threat of throwing them in prison forever, you know, if you will. Um, but when the Lord is on you, then you have the ability to be with him, not just say, no, you know, you, you judge with it. That's fine. All the words he said, the, the key is they were with the Lord. Do you see that? It was, it's... Don't get wrapped up just in the words. Yes, great words and all that stuff. They would never have said that those words if they didn't have the real goods. Amen? Yeah. That's the deal. And so, you know, this is why we have a Bible school. This is why we share what we share in church. This is why we have outreaches to Ireland or wherever. And this is why we you know, do all kind of different things at different times is because we want it in us and we want it, we want to be in situations where we can prove it's in us, sometimes to us. I mean, I've had people come to me and go, gosh, Randy, I was in this situation and I, I just don't, you know, you know me, Randy, I don't know how to talk in anything and I'm standing there and this person came up and, and I just poured out Jesus. I, and he said, he said, I said stuff I didn't, I don't think I ever heard even from you. It was the Lord. <laughs> Thank God, amen. <laughs> of course. But you have to, you have to prove that to yourself. You know, that he'll come forth. He's there. He loves you. He loves them. And you get to see, well, that was, that was two separate examples. Not, no preparation in advance, you know what I mean? <laughs> no preparation in advance. Just, do you have the, the goods? And, and we all do if we're born again, Amen. I mean, it's not like, well, I need to be in the ministry for 50 years like Randy. Trust me, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's the Lord, of course. But the thing that is, that is moving me about this story and these stories and all that's working its way towards Stephen is that Stephen... Is hearing about it, the stories are being spread, and everyone's getting a little more bold. And their leaders are doing it, too. You know what I'm saying? So, um, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. <laughs> well, that's that's. That's fighting words right there. <laughs> Whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Okay, so picture this. Here's the high priest. Here's all these guys. Why are you talking and all this stuff? And it says, well, well, you tell me, should we obey God or not? Um, you slew Jesus on a cross and he did it so that he could give forgiveness of sins. Hint, hint, to y'all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you don't know what arrows, the arrows of the Almighty might strike. You just don't know. But the more you move in the spirit, the more you move. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking about 
um, um, charismatic movement spirit. I'm talking about the spirit that is there to reveal Christ in us, but he's also there to demonstrate Christ through Jesus' body. And the boldness we're talking about is not, um, you know, not putting people on the spot. And a lot of people, you know, I mean, again, I've been around for a while in, in Christianity, and I've seen a lot of people go, okay, I'm supposed to be bold, and they, they you know, <laughs> I'll give you another story. How about that? So uh, we were part of JW's church. Some of you know who that is and whatever, but uh, and I was assistant pastor, and part of our job was to go around door to door all over Denton. And so uh, I got a map of Denton, and I I uh, marked it off in, in blocks, as it were, not city blocks, but in blocks of territories. And I said, Deb, this is what we're going to do. We're going to hit this one first. We're going to work our way on this side of the town. Then we're going to go this side, and then we're going to cut across, and then we're going to da 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 until we've reached every house in Denton and knocked on the door and said, you know, we didn't say, come to our church. We, you know, that wasn't our deal. We had, a, we had an ace up our sleeve. When we knocked on that door, it was baby Naphtali <laughs> in a little buggy. And <laughs> we would knock on the door. And uh, they'd come to the door. We'd say, hi, we're just out talking with people about Jesus. And, uh, you know, we would never, never mention the church unless they asked. And we'd just say, you know, but a lot of times we would say, um, we, what we want to do is just find if there's any needs that you have that we could pray about or, you know, believe the Lord with you or whatever, nothing else. You know, we're not looking for anything else except for us to be here for your sake. And um, so this was early on. This was probably, this, probably the third time we went out, and I don't know why, but but the Lord did real good with me, and y'all would have figured there was, the Lord would have done real good with Deb, right? Mm -hmm. Well, she wasn't there yet in that place. So, so we knock on these doors, and the people go, oh, hi, you know, and yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, you could pray about it. And I would say, I don't mean necessarily even pray right now unless you want to. Um, we'll just pray later. I'm just asking you that. And then you know, just walk off and go, wow, they're serious. You know what I mean? They're, they're not trying to get us in their church or all this kind of stuff. Anyway, so, you know, people come to the door and, hey, yeah, da, da, da. We'd, I'd get to talking to them and everything and, oh, such a cute baby and everything. And then we'd move on. So Deb goes, uh, I think, you know, I think I, I want to try knocking on the door. I think you asked me. Did I? What you think? Yeah. Why don't, you, why don't you try it? So she knocks on the door. You want to come up here? And no, I don't remember. So he, she knocks on the door. This guy comes to the door and goes, what do you want? And she goes, we're just here to talk about Jesus. Jesus? I don't want Jesus. Why don't you get out of my yard? Get out of here. Bam. And she goes, yeah. She looks at me and goes, what did I do wrong? I said, you didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> You can hear you should be bold and try to be bold in yourself. Or you can say, okay, so I, I, I know it won't work if I be bold in myself, so I won't be bold at all. No, that's not the answer. Jesus, live in me. Amen. Why is it, you know, it's either there or not there. He's there. You know, and you, you have to be, you have to put yourself in these different situations to see the results. And I, I'm telling you that Peter and all these guys, Stephen and all of them, well, they didn't know which way it'd go. And in fact, with Stephen, it went another way, but it went a more beautiful way, a more powerful way with him saying the same words of Jesus from the cross 
Amen? But we'll get into all that, won't we? All right, so... Uh, verse 32, and we are his witnesses uh, of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost. I <laughs> just love that one. Look, I mean, I can see the high priest and the, the, the captain of the day. I can see them all there, the council all there. And he goes, look, I'm telling you, this is really happening, man. We, we are his witnesses. You know, all of us that are right here that you, you, know, you stopped us from preaching in the temple, we're his witnesses and the Holy Ghost too. He is. <laughs> Don't you love it? See, it all doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be the Lord. <clears throat> when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. There's a new spirit going on here with these guys. Because they're realizing that these things may happen but they're seeing them, I don't even know if I'm going to get to the next one, maybe I will, <clears throat> um, before I say any more on that. So then uh, Acts chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 40 and 42. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and they let him go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame. Suffer shame. They're rejoicing. They're taking that as a badge of proof that they're with Jesus. You know what I mean? They didn't come back and go, man, I guess we blew that. It really went bad. You know, everything was bad. I mean, they were angry and, they, you know, they were cut to the heart and then they wanted to slay us, you know. But then, thank God, they just beat us. <laughs> but, they, but they wanted to slay us, you know. And, but, but instead, they let them go and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing. They departed from the presence of the council Rejoicing that they were counted worthy. That they were counted worthy. You know, good grief. You know, this is, this is the gospel. This is part of the life of Christ. It's a huge part of who he is. He's a lamb. This is just, and we just get upset about every little thing. We get upset about this. We get upset about that. And we'll, so-and-so did this, and, you know, that's unfair, and this is da-da-da-da. How many times have y'all hadn't heard me preach on this? And every time I have scripture in front of me that proves it. Right. How many scriptures will it take for us to go, this is what it's about? But if Christ is in you, then he's self-giving and he's a lamb and he's okay with it. But you are still too religious because you whine about what you should be thanking God for. And you still look at it. You won't change your view. You won't get your heart lined up with the lamb. Don't go witnessing. Don't do it. Don't do anything for God because you probably have somebody do something wrong to you. That's right. I'm leaving that church. <laughs> you know, because they, they didn't see it my way. Yeah, y'all, try being a pastor for a while. You can have every bit of authority that God can give you and people will still question They'll still question. They will, and they'll go, you know, well, well, that ain't right. You know how I know that? Because before I was a pastor, I did that. I, I would hear sometimes a preacher say something. I go, well, that ain't right. And I took it to the Lord. I said, Lord, this, this couldn't possibly be right. And here's what the Lord said to me. And I'm telling you because I still remember it all. He said, so 
You know everything now. You know all things. And you know whether that's right or not because you know all about that. And you know all about this too. And so, so there's no um, a teaching you or anything because you already have attained. You know more than the leaders that I've given you. you. You know more than the Bible that I've given you. You know more than the spirit I put in you. You know what's right because you weigh it against what you don't like. And you say that ain't right. Kind of got quiet in here. That's the truth. I mean, it's the truth. I'm sorry that it's the truth for your sake because you're not going to get over it. You're not. You're not going to get over it. You're going to either see Jesus eventually. I mean, I remember one example, and I've used, used this something like this before. Put, put uh, I, did, I think I used a button. Put a picture of every sermon I ever preached on the wall, okay? And then take a dart and just throw it somewhere. Put blindfold on and then just throw it. And then go get that sermon and either read it or play it and see if I'm not saying the same exact thing. Amen? Yeah. So... It's like, how many sermons will it take? Uh, 70 times 7? I've done it. <laughs> In 50 years, I've done it. You know? Somewhere, we should just read like this, and they departed from the presence of the council. Remember, and beaten them, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy. This is God saying, you are now worthy. And we're going, I don't want to be worthy, <laughs> or whatever. We're saying, no, this is, you're treating me unworthy. But he's not. He's trying to bring you into his heart. He's trying to bring you into his view and his mind and... He's trying to, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a whole world out here, people. There's a whole world. We got people from every denomination. We got people from every political side. We got people, and they're all fussing and fighting and hating and disliking and everything else. And we stand, you know, with our little group of whatever or our big group of whatever, and we fight with them. Because they should suffer because they're wrong. But we should suffer because we're right. Amen? Yeah. That's what it says. Counted, that they were counted worthy. This, they went out of there going, can you believe this? This is a group with a new spirit. Is this a group with a new spirit? Yes. This is a group with a new spirit. And they're going out. I'm sure they're bleeding, man. The thing they beat them with, you know. Cat of nine tails or whatever. And, and they're, they're coming out in this precious spirit. They're not going, that was unfair. Or that was wrong. Or we really are with Jesus and they're not. No. No. They came out and said, oh, can you believe God counted us worthy for this? And they rejoiced. They didn't just acknowledge the truth. They went, woohoo. They said, we're on the right track. The Lamb of God died for all of us. You know what I mean? And he wants to live in us. This is the life God put in us. And so he wants us to manifest this in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Can't get much darker, folks. 
and I'm sure it can get a lot, but this is, this is pretty bad for my times anyway. I don't think I could ever put my finger on any other time that was this bad, with people just divided on every front, and just people mad. They're just mad. They're looking for an excuse, you know? So, so you know, they have a gun and, you know, somebody cuts them off and then they shoot them, they kill them. And they go, cutting me off, it is, I'm glad I'm counted worthy to kill somebody who cut me off, that I'm counted worthy to spend the rest of my life in prison. What? What kind of logic is that? You see what I'm saying, though? I mean, what kind of logic is that? Well, it's the exact opposite of the logic of God. That's what it is. The exact opposite of the logic of God. It's the exact opposite of the way God sees. The exact opposite of the eyes of the eternal before the foundation of the world. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is saying the way I see is more important than the way God sees. But we've got it all twisted up now, don't we? Where it's like, no, no, God wants this. God wants us to destroy everybody. See, we'll, we'll get some more on Sunday morning. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> we'll get some more. But, you know. Everybody's going, well, this is wrong, and I, you know, I'm going to do something about it, but it's not a positive thing. It's always pointed at what's wrong with that person or that group or whatever. Don't look for what's wrong to be a, against something. Anybody can do that. Anyway. Boy, I really, I really said it, didn't I? Suffered. Worthy to county worthy to suffer shame. <laughs> There's a, a mind bender if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because suffering sh shame's almost worse than death. Because when you're dead, you're done. I mean, this was my view of Jesus on the cross. I mean, here he was, every motive that he had was towards the Father or others to give, to bless, to, you know. And this is what he's doing and everything. And so they hang him on a cross so that every enemy can come by and mock and say, see, you're not, you know, if you're the son of God, come down. He knows why he can't because he's the son of God. He can't. But they're thinking, well, if you're the son of God, you need to, show your power and do all this stuff. So he's, he can't answer back. He can't, you know. He's just nailed up there. He, he can't slap them. <laughs> Hush up, you know. Or, of course, I did do a blog on that once. Shame on me, but, but nonetheless. <laughs> Gosh, but this uh, this thing of suffering shame. I mean, I don't know why it, we can't figure it out. That um, you you start going through the Bible and you start seeing people like Paul or whatever, you know, and you see them going through stuff, and they, you know, or or James count it all joy when you fall into various trials and da 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 da. Well. Suffering shame, and suffering shame was, was, is always a big thing. If you knew anything about the Jonah class, it deeply involves the red worm in that story. And it was a painting of suffering and shame all the way through the tabernacle based on that red worm. <clears throat> I shared that. You know, I remember asking everybody, what was the, so what do you think the most important thing out of that sentence was? I don't think I heard anybody say, oh, it's the red worm, <laughs> you know. Uh, why was that not important? Because it was crushed to, to fulfill its purpose. 
and the grapes are crushed to bring about the new wine, and the wheat is crushed to bring about the, 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 the bread of life. It's, we know these things. We know these things. We know, we've heard them so much, we know them, but we don't know them. That's what I'm getting at. We don't, but we don't know them. Because if you know them, then you know, okay, I, you know, here it is. Uh, I'm suffering shame right now, undeservedly. I'm with Jesus. This is, this is the place. This is the time. This is it. I want to be with the Lord. I don't want to get involved in the junk. I don't want to get all wrapped up in the world. I don't want to get all wrapped up in who's right or who's wrong. I just want to be with Jesus. And, I, and, and if I can do that uh, in the midst of suffering and shame, I can do it anywhere. But we stand in the middle between two and then we take our side. We don't know it. If we do that, we don't know it. We don't. I'm sorry. We don't know it. That I'm, you know, I'd like to say, well, it's a shame you don't know it. But I don't know what you'd do with that. <laughs> well, I don't want to suffer shame, so I'm not going to know it, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> so, so they departed in the, from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and, and in every house they cease not. Okay. God made sure that when they got through with this situation here that the big deal that came out of it was that they rejoiced to suffer shame and then he says, and they just, they just daily, they just went into the temple and, you know, let's suffer some more shame for his sake. Mm -hmm. Show the scars. Bear about in your body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Every house in the temple, cease not. To teach and preach Jesus Christ. Well, which Jesus Christ do you think they preached? Yeah, they, didn't, they weren't talking about Jesus of Nazareth. They weren't going gentle Jesus, meek and mild. He's here to, to make life perfect and good and, you know. Well, I mean, I have to admit, I... I feel like I'm so blessed to have God as my father. I do. And it's not, a, it's not a theological concept or a religious concept. He's, he's my father. Now, he says, I, you know, Jesus said, when you pray, pray our father. <clears throat> but he also says that he's a father to the fatherless. <clears throat> and when I was really young, my father took off and left and my stepfather wasn't a father. And, and he became my father. And when just even the slightest thing that happens good, I, I based on my knowing of this scripture, but I'm going to say, I talked to him like the best dad you could ever have. And I tell him, thank you so much for that. Thank you for your care. Because within, within the Godhead, you know, you know, there's Father and there's the Son and there's the Holy Spirit and, and uh, So for those of you who are just listening to this, I just drew a big circle and then three circles within it, and one represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The scripture says in James that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. 
Okay. So he's, um, if, if you put him on a scale, he's the one that reigns it down. But, but uh, it's in Ephesians, and I can't remember it right off, but that's where I got the concept of, of uh, the plan of God. The Father thought it. The Son bought it. And the Holy Spirit uh, wrought it, meaning he's working to bring it all about. The Father thought it. He came up with the plan. And the son said, I'll buy it at the cross. And the spirit says, I'll spend the rest of my time, as long as this earth is, down there trying to bring it about. So if something comes from the son, it first came from the father to him to give. Ask him. Ask Jesus. Go to the gospel of John and just ask him. And then read it and go, yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh, yep. You, you can't run from it. And the Holy Spirit is down here in the midst of us working to bring forth all of these things. And, and, and eternally, all of these things are wrapped up in this one big circle called the Godhead. But we are brought into that through Jesus. And through the Holy Spirit working it in us as reality. It's not theology and having the right thoughts about it. Um, correct theology. I have, I have correct theology, but it doesn't work in you. Then, you know, we can't offer correct theology up to God. He doesn't, he doesn't live on that plane. He lives on a plane of life. He does. You say, well, I've got the right theology. So, so did the Pharisees, at least in their mind, and in our, mind, in our minds too. And, and the Godhead is not a theology. And it, when you can get to the Father in such a way that in your daily life, you're going about your business some, and if something goes uh, <laughs> this is a really dumb example, but today we had a, a, a light fixture that Deb needed put up beside her bed. She hadn't had a good light there for a while because the last one broke, and so, so I said, I'll do it, I'll do it, you know. And uh, so she had to go somewhere, it doesn't matter, but she had to go do some stuff. And uh, so... You know, I got wrench and this and that. And, and one of the things I've learned is if you're ever going to do a job, it's going to take twice as long. Or t you know, It just does. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, so I figured it would be, and I figured I didn't have quite everything I need, but it looked like I did. So I start, and I, sure enough, you know, junk starts happening. And as it happens, um, uh, one at a time, negative thing, um, I just say, Father, thank you. Thank you. You know what I need. And you know this is my opportunity to just love on you because, you know, of your care. Your care. I, th I thank you that you count me worthy. You go, well, that's nothing. If you can't do it there, <laughs> you know. So we're, so... Um, it just, it just, uh, it just gets complicated, and I've got power tools and everything else down. After a while, you know, from upstairs, which, which by the way, every trip is one and then back down. And um, uh, so, towards the end, the things that I originally brought didn't work, and middle way didn't work, but all of a sudden. Everything just comes together. It just comes together. And it was my opportunity to bless Deb at whatever cost, no matter how small it is. Because if you, you're doing it from your heart, and you really are doing it from your heart, it's not small, right, Deb? No. If I'm doing it from my heart for her, she knows 
that that's worth more than just the job done. You can pay somebody to come in, but they may not do it from their heart. You know what I'm saying? Probably won't. They'll do it for the cash money. But, but the, the joy I felt for being able to do that for her, but at the same time, I can't describe it in words, but this happens regularly. I know, I know that I have a father and he's a good father. And I think when I speak to him, heart behind it, when I speak to him, not religious, like your Lord, oh, good God almighty, <laughs> whatever, you know. But it's like so intimate of, of uh, you are just, the most wonderful father I could ever have. And you just give me, you help me, you, you cover me, you, you, know, you stand there with me when I'm going through it. Where, that, where it's not like, well, God's way over there and I gotta go through this shame and everything and then go to God. I'm, yeah. you know, there's a oneness about all this stuff. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry because I know that I have failed to tell you the wonder of having such a great father all the time with you or all the time available for you to really love him for being such a good father. I don't know. My word, I, I feel sad that I can't really communicate. And maybe he's going, I don't want you to. Just let's just let's just stay together, okay? <laughs> All right, so um, and daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. So here's my final paragraph before we move on later, next, next class. To me, it is quite obvious that Stephen and future believers learn to stand with Jesus in faith without fear of consequences when confronted, and that they learn this from the example of Peter and others, just as Stephen will do even unto death. This is the, this is the story that it's led up to in the book of Acts right here, and it'll keep going like that. It's just, it's just amazing that the story is, isn't victory all the time and da-da-da-da. It's, it's deeply counting that he would, he would count me worthy to suffer shame for his name. Well, most of us don't suffer shame for his name. We suffer shame. Amen. We just suffer shame and we don't even think about his name, much less him. But, to, but these guys, this is a new spirit. Amen. How would you like this to really get us? Amen. Man, oh man. That'd be, yeah. that, I mean, to him, that would be glorious. He's like, would you? You know, I can hear him now, you know, looking over, going, would you really do that for me? So, um, yes. I sure would. <clears throat> to me, it is quite obvious that Stephen and future believers learn to stand with Jesus in faith without fear of consequences when confronted. And that's a comma after that, because you remember, I write long sentences like Paul does. <laughs> uh, my big brother taught me that. And, uh, uh, and, and that they learn this from the example of Peter and others, just as Stephen will do even unto death. In other words, they're going to hear that story, the coming, the coming new generation that's coming. You know what I mean? They're going to hear, I mean, they're going to hear the first ones with Peter and everything. And then Stephen, who had all of these stories before he 
was written into the Bible, he's, he's going to give himself even further. And all of this new generation that's still coming, you know, it talks about it. And, the, and the, 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 they multiplied and, you know, just, you know, constantly come. They're all going to come and then they're going to they're going to sit down and they're going to hear Stephen's story, you know. And they're going to go, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. And they're going to go, this is so not like our world, we want this. We want this Jesus. We want this life. This is way better. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it like this, but it's not meant to offend. This is better than Judaism. This is Christ. This is better than Christianity. This is Christ. Yes. Christianity isn't calling us to do this. Christ is, and the Holy Spirit is, and the Father desires it. So, onward with what I said I would read. And in the end, the same Jesus that they rejected in the earth will be vehemently rejected in his followers and even in heaven, as Stephen describes Jesus watching the events and standing up for him in Acts. So Stephen is... In the end of Stephen's story, <clears throat> in the end, the same Jesus that they rejected in the earth when Jesus walked the earth will be vehemently rejected in Jesus' followers, us or them, that were coming along. And even in heaven, as Stephen describes Jesus overlooking the whole thing, watching the events and standing up for him in Acts, they're still hating that Jesus, even in heaven. See? Well, it doesn't, this Jesus doesn't look good to our flesh. But our flesh is supposed to be dead. Why isn't it? You see what I mean? I mean, I understand. I, understand. I fought this as much as anybody when I first thought, what? You know, I came from Kenneth Copeland's camp to Berean. You know, and Kenneth Copeland's was, you know, miracles and, and success and finances and, you know, fame, you know, and being in the ministry and all of this stuff. And I get to Bria and they're saying, you know, you're dead. And I'm going, I don't want to be dead. <laughs> you know. But I didn't say that at first. I just fought it. I fought it. And I, I rebuked them publicly in the church service and pointed out scriptures. And they didn't fight back and say, you're an idiot. For a while, they just trusted the Lord until one guy that was not even in the ministry, just a regular person, came up and said, just, just look at these scriptures. Just. So I went back to my dorm room, laid down, looked at the scriptures, and the Spirit of God began the change. Because I could see it. I went, okay, well, this is the Word of God. I mean, this is, the, the Word of God is what, what, you know, we're going to stand before God and, you know, if, if it's not based on that, and this clearly is the Word of God, and I would have said it wasn't in the Word of God if I hadn't have, you know, seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> but the more I really got into the Word, and, and you know, I, I mean, I know I'm going over, but the truth is, <clears throat> if I had have stayed in an environment that was pointing out that we're supposed to be, you know, great and we're supposed to have power and we're supposed to do all of this stuff, you know, and, and uh, have a million people in here. I mean, some people go, well, you're stupid. You're nothing. You only got these, this bunch and look at them. <laughs> I didn't say that. They did. <laughs> in truth, I love you. And in truth, I don't want to be anywhere else. And in truth, nobody's offered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but I don't want to be anywhere else. And I wouldn't want to be with any other people. And that's the truth. That is, that is the truth. Uh, you know, we're talking about all this stuff and changes and da-da-da-da. I don't, I don't look at that in relationship to numbers of people coming in. If you're a shepherd, numbers of sheep coming in just means more poop and, you know, whatever else. It does. It does. But it also means more opportunity to lay down my life, which we'll hear about on Sundays more. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? I love you guys. There's, there's no way in the world... I would have gone into all of this stuff if there hadn't been something in your heart that was pulling it out of me. Yes. Do you understand that? That's a true thing. Teachers know this kind of stuff. You can, you can go to a big meeting with a lot of people, and if they don't have a heart, you preach, and it just feel like, you know. You know. But you go, to, you go anywhere, and the people are really open. It's like, whoa, this like they're, they're pulling this out of me. They're hungry. They want Jesus. Excuse me, I'm not doing that. But you understand what I'm saying. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for wanting Jesus. Thank you for caring about Jesus. And I'm, I'm not just talking about all of our people here. Alana, thank you. You've always had such a precious heart to me in my mind and, and my relationship with you. You have always wanted Jesus and sought out Jesus. And you have been faithful. And I don't care whatever stuff. I know having kids and life, life tries to swallow everything up, but, but I want you to know, I, I just feel the Lord always drawing out of me because you want him, you love him, and you care. So, and to the rest of you also. Amen. I don't think Mike was feeling, Mike Gentry was feeling very well, was he? And so, yeah, so we're going to just pray for him. Um, gosh, we got these wonderful people from Ireland here. Yeah, it's a, the hour that the, they're in right now. And yet here they are. And they're always going after the Lord. And of course, guess what? Alana's from Ireland, even though she's in Australia. Uh, let's just to stretch a little bit. Let's just stand together and we'll pray. Hmm. Father, I thank you for your spirit because I felt freedom in his heart to fly to be the dove that would land on Jesus and I felt him flying and landing on Jesus and flying and landing on Jesus and not being stuck in a church service but in a, in a house of the hungry. And Father, I just pray covering over each and every one of us that are that are on Zoom or that will listen to this later or that are in this room Father, you have precious people. And you have blessed us with each and every one of these folks that go after you with their heart and they want you and they desire you and they seek you. And thank you for them. And though none of us are perfect and none of us, none of us stand on our own merits, we, thank, we are thankful that all of us are in desperate need of your son, and yet we just have freedom and joy at times that is just so overwhelmingly wonderful. So we continue, Lord. We continue, Father. Father, I pray that the, my attempt to describe you uh, 
maybe they won't ever get it from what I shared, but that you may allow the Holy Spirit and the, and the beautiful desire of the Son for you, Father, to fill them on a daily basis and in all circumstances, that you may be truly glorified as a Father, for that you are. In Jesus' name, amen.